Ryan here with Dark Rangers Inc. And today we're really gonna show you how to make your galaxies and nebula pop all within PixInsight. We've been showing you how to do a lot of cool post-processing in Photoshop, but I've been getting a lot of messages from people who haven't made the jump there yet. They're still learning PixInsight and they're like, Ryan, show me how to do some cool shit software. If you've been in the hobby for a while, you've probably heard of these tools, but maybe you've forgotten about them. And if you're new, it's time for you to discover local histogram equalization and HDR transformation to take your galaxies and nebula to the next level. So stay tuned. All right, here we are in PixInsight with the Triangulum Galaxy and the California Nebula. And really quickly, I wanted to go over what does HDR stand for? It's high dynamic range. Now, what we're trying to do essentially with most of our images is we're actually trying to enhance the dynamic range, which is essentially the variance between the darkest darks and the brightest brights. Now, in a situation where we have high dynamic range, that means there's a big disparity between the darkest point and the brightest point of the image. Usually in the center of a galaxy, galaxy or the core of a nebula like we have with M42 and the Orion Nebula. Now a lot of galaxies like the Triangulum will be brightest in the center because that's where all the stars are concentrated. We see this with Andromeda, M51, really any galaxy that has a spiral structure has a brighter core. And so there's a lot of detail often that can be hidden in there if it's not completely blown out. And we need to compress that light and that data to really get that underlying detail to show through. So that's what HDR Multiscale really specializes in. And what I typically do, especially at this focal length where I'm at like 500 millimeters, I tend to, when I start, increase the number of layers. Now, when you open the tool, it starts with six. And if I don't check any boxes, I'm gonna go ahead and actually check the lightness mask because we only want to apply it to the light area and I drag and drop it, you'll see that with um, six layers selected, it tends to give a really broad and kind of a harsh effect to the image and overdoes it a little bit. And so for me, at this focal length with a target like this, I will go ahead and up it to nine, but you can experiment um, based on your specific target and whatever setup you're using. There may be a time when going even less than six layers is appropriate, but in this case, you'll see nine gives a little bit more of a natural look. It still keeps keeps the detail in the spiral arm, and it doesn't completely flatten the image, it just does to the brightest points. Now, if I want to add a little bit of detail with that, I can check one of these other boxes, and if you want to preserve the color and the hue, it really recommends using two intensity. So I have the lightness mask box check and two intensity, and I'll drag that. And this is gonna give us a really nice effect where it not only compresses some of those brighter areas, but then adds some contrast and punch to it. So you can see if we do the before, right? And then the after, it does a really nice job enhancing the detail and the arms, even some of the nebula. And if I wanted to perhaps go after some smaller structure, I have different scaling functions and I can go to small scale 32 and we can do that. And you can see it really does go after some of the smaller details and enhances those. Now, I don't particularly like this for the entire image, but maybe because there are more small details in the core, I would like that. Or just in general, you want to isolate the core if it isn't, like the bright points in this galaxy are pretty well spread out amongst this whole area. And then we have some subtle faint areas on the very outside limits of the galaxy. But with areas where there's just a small bright section, maybe in the very center, we can use what's called a range mask. And we do that by going to process all process and then find range selection right here. It's gonna open this box, hit the preview, which is this little circle guy. What we're wanting to do, we have the lower and the upper limit. Well, we wanna keep the upper limit to the bright side because we're trying to target that. So what we're doing is we're moving the lower areas until we just isolate the brightest of the bright. So let's pretend it's Andromeda and we've just got this really bright central core. And then what I wanna do with that is I wanna smooth it out because in this situation, I don't want to affect the stars. If you do, give a little bit less smoothness, but I can kind of, as I use the smoothness, you see the star kind of fade away, what that'll also do is give a nice smooth transition to the effect. That way it's not very blunt and looks artificial or fake. If I want to fine tune that, I can use the fuzziness and just think of that the fuzziness is like the fine tuner. So it allows me just to do more of a micro adjust 
whereas this is gonna be kind of a bigger adjustment. So I'll go ahead and apply that. Now that doesn't actually create the mask, it creates a layer. And so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna left click on this tab and I'm gonna drag it underneath this tab, it's going to apply that mask. Now I have it set up so it doesn't show, but if I go to mask, show mask, you can see just the center area that we allowed is all that's there. Now, for the sake of demonstrating the effect, I'm gonna leave that off, we'll zoom out a little bit. And now if I do that small scale and I apply it, you can see it only does it to that very center area. As you can see, it doesn't look super natural because we did the small scale and on this particular image, I think the B3 spline is going to look a little bit better. And then there we go. So it left the kind of middle and outer areas if we undo it and then redo it. And that has a really nice effect. Uh, I think it brings out more of the detail, more of the structure. This is only about four or five hours of data with my 2600 MC. So this is just color data. You know, obviously we've still got some work to do. We could use a little bit more integration time, but that's a nice tool. Now we can use LHE with this as well, but so that we're not duplicating it, I'm gonna dive into the California Nebula. This already has, because it is 25 hours of monochrome data, there is already a lot of detail in the structure here, um, but LHE is really going to allow us to bring out even more of that. I tend to like this tool more, mostly because it does have a preview window, which is really nice, but then it also has these three sliders. With the HDR multi-scale, you can kind of do it with layers. It affects it a little bit in the scaling function. But as you guys know, the big reason I like Photoshop is because I like working with sliders versus trying to kind of guess what the change is gonna be. Now, as you can see with the amount at 1.0, it's a very strong effect. Um, but what we'll do is we'll go ahead and decrease that. I typically like to be between like 0.2 and 0.3 on the amount and then we'll do the before and after. Let's go to point three. Now you're wondering, what is this kernel radius? The kernel radius is the amount of pixels that are gonna be affected. So if you hover over it, it recommends somewhere between 50 and 200 to get the best results. If I go down, smaller detail, right? If I go up to, let's say 200, the outer limits, if we go in that area, as you can see, it's uh, gonna affect bigger sections. Still adds contrast. I tend to like, you know, somewhere in the 120 to 200 range. So let's go to like 130. That does a nice job enhancing the large structures and the small structures. You can see the before and after. And then you can also affect the contrast limit, which does exactly what you think. So if we go down to one, we do before and after, almost no change, 1.5, two, 2.5, it starts getting dramatic all the way up to 64 where it's crazy. So I would probably do this one right at like maybe 0.25. I'll go a little bit bigger on the structure because this is a big nebula. And then before and after. Now what you can do, you can do two different sizes. So if you wanna go after some of the big structures with 200, and then again, you could do an, another um, type of range mask or, or any mask that you wanna do. And then maybe in this area right here, you wanna go after some of those smaller details. So you could do a separate one and apply it to there. Now, I wanna go over HDR multi-scale with this target for one reason. You'll notice we didn't talk about de-ringing, and that's because I wasn't able to make de-ringing an issue with the Triangulum Galaxy, um, but it does end up being it with here. So I'm gonna go ahead and drag and drop, and you can actually just see what it's gonna do here. So also a really cool look. It does kind of define the, the core area. It, it does darken it and add some contrast. But if we zoom in here, so when I say artifacts I mean this looks like kind of a shiny orangish reddish dots that go in there now if you just I'm gonna undo this if I just click de-ringing unfortunately that's not enough I'll drag it again and it, it doesn't actually get rid of it in this case but we have this uh, small scale and large scale sliders and that allows me to kind of fine tune the de-ringing because you can see it's still there. So what I'm gonna do is I, I tested it a little bit and I found that right at about 0.0, that was the least I could use and still get rid of it. Now, the problem is, is as you increase this small scale, the effect that it has gets diminished. So real quick, I'm gonna go ahead and reapply it. Remember kind of how dark this is, how much it got rid of um, some of those highlights, undo it and reapply it. You'll see that it's not going to have as strong of an effect in this case because of that small scale setting. So as you can see, it is brighter, a little bit smoother too, 
um, but it doesn't have uh, any of those artifacts in there. Good way to find a little bit of a compromise is go as small as you can with that. I'm gonna go ahead and not just do the lightness, let's do it with the lightness and two intensity check. So that's the look that we get with HDR multi-scale. What we'll do is we'll do a side-by-side -side comparison. This is the local histogram equalization on the right and the HDR on the left. If I undo it, that's what we get. I'll go ahead and redo. And then if we undo the HDR and redo it. You can see there are some differences. They both accomplish a similar task of trying to add some contrast with the LHE and then add some contrast and also compress some of those highlights with the HDR multi-scale transform. So hopefully you guys will be able to use this to enhance your images if you wanna stay in PixInsight and get a little bit more of that wow factor and really take your images to the next level. Hopefully both these tools will be beneficial for you. If there's anything else you guys wanna see in the near future, let me know. And until the next one, clear skies.